Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, this is a new week, and this is what in Christendom is called the Holy Week. Praise God. Now, having finished the 40 days fasting and prayer, which we call Lent. Now, why is it called the Holy Week? Because this is the week that Jesus, it is believed that Jesus went to the cross. So this week, Friday is Good Friday. And then um, Sunday is Easter Sunday. Praise God. Now, we celebrate these things. I know there are some uh, believers who look, look, do we really know the date? And uh, now, nah, nah, listen, it's not about knowing the exact date. It's about calling to remembrance what Jesus did. Praise God. That's the whole essence why we celebrate Good Friday and Easter. We are calling to remembrance. Now, that was a real event that took place. That is truth. I told you before, everything you read in the Bible is true. Everything you read in the Bible is true. Now, I have a lot I'm going to be sharing with us this week. But before we do that, can we call for our daily bread as the Lord has instructed us? So join me right now and make this declaration. Say with me, say, Father, I make a demand today for my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And Father, we thank you as we go into today's message. Thank you for your spirit that is here. Thank you for his removing every body and destroying every yoke in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word that comes in truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, I was sharing earlier that the reason we celebrate these things, the reason we celebrate Easter and, and Good Friday is not just because we want to feel religious. It's because we are remembering what Jesus did. Now, someone say, eh, but he did it now. Do we have to remember? Come on now. You see, it's amazing and, and sort of funny enough is coinciding with what the Spirit of God have laid in my heart to share with you this week. Let, let's turn our Bibles to Psalm chapter 78. Psalm 78 and reading from verse 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Notice, it says, give ear to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Now, this is God speaking. He says, listen. He says, give ear. Pay attention. That's what he's saying. Pay attention to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Now, now you see something like this. And you wonder if, if it has changed from this time to now. I mean, when I mean this time, the, David was writing this. In the days of David and now. Now God says, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Meaning words will be coming out of my mouth. I want you to listen to them. So I asked that question earlier to ask, has God stopped speaking or has words stopped coming out from his mouth today? Now just hold that thought there. Verse 2 says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Note that also. He says, which we, verse 3 says, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us meaning we didn't experience this ourselves we heard it and our fathers told us now watch this verse 4 it says we will not hide them from their children showing to the generation to come the praises of the lord and his strength 
and his wonderful works that he had done. He is saying, we will show to the generation coming. Now, what's he saying? God has been wonderful to us. God has been mighty. He has been merciful to us. Now he's saying, look, we are going to show to the next generation. We are going to show them the wonderful works of God. Okay, keep following verse 5. He says, for, now, look, this is where we're headed for. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. Mm. I'm sharing with you the purpose of laws and commandments. That's what I'm sharing with you this week. The purpose of laws and commandment. We're still dealing with God taking us into another level, like he has said this month. So he, he, I'm sharing with you this week on the purpose of laws and commandments. Now he says here that God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Now, I know we live in a, in a generation that believe is a grace generation. So when you talk about law, they get edgy about the law. They say, oh, don't, don't talk to me about the law. We're in the dispensation of grace. Now I've listened to many people and um, I, I said it is with all due respect. I found out that many people don't even understand these things. They say it's easy to be an academician and you want to start um, explaining things even from scripture. But if you don't have a revelation of these things, these things are not explained by studying with your mental knowledge alone. These things are gotten from the place of revelation. So you receive a revelation first, then you begin to apply your mental knowledge to bringing out that revelation that that's how it works you don't start out this thing I, I tell people this many times you don't start out especially if the lord has called you to be a teacher of his word as a teacher a teacher is not one who can read very well and explain very well no not one who's anointed of god if god have anointed you to teach i'll tell you what happens to you he gives you things by revelation because there must be the anointing to function in that office if there is no anointing then you haven't been called that's just what that's what, just the truth just like a prophet the anointing comes upon him and he begins to speak of things that he didn't know naturally you understand so also the teacher the anointing comes upon him and then he begins to explain things that he couldn't have gotten by reading but guess what when in his explanation, you, the reader, will understand better. That's the purpose of the teaching ministry. For example, now he says here, he says, I will open my mouth and author, I will open my mouth in a parable. See, I will author dark sayings of old. Now, you see, when he says, I will speak in parables, I will author dark sayings of old. Now, that's just how um, most of prophecies are. Now, a, a prophet can prophesy, but you see, it will take a teacher by the same spirit to explain that prophecy and make it um, user-friendly for people. That's how these things work. That's how these things work. Sometimes prophecies are not in plain um, understanding. So you see, one can prophesy um, using um, animals and, and things like that, see, in visions. Because sometimes prophecy comes by visions. Because you see Daniel explaining, oh, I saw a beast and the beast had four heads. Now, those things were given to him by revelation. Now, it would take the anointing of God's spirit to decode those things and begin to explain them, to make them user-friendly. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, but then get, get what we're saying here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In verse 5, I'll read that again. He said, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. First, he says, he established a testimony in 
Jacob. Now, what does it mean that God established a testimony in Jacob? Now, this is it. When you begin to walk with the Lord, there is one thing he does. The first thing he does in your life is to establish a testimony in your life. Yeah, when you start your walk with God, the first thing God does in your life is to establish a testimony. Now, you notice he said he established a testimony in Jacob and he appointed a law in Israel. So Jacob, Israel, are they not the same person he's talking about? I will explain that briefly to you. Jacob is Ali Brogeshin. You know, sometimes you, you actually see this occurring in different places of scripture. God speaking. And, and in the same verse, he will talk about Jacob and then he will talk about Israel. So I'm like, why is he not just using one name? Why is he using, you know, he's talking to the same person? Now, in physically, he's, you think he's talking to the same person. But see, spiritually, he's not talking to the same person. I'll give you an I'll I'll, I'll explain that to you. When he refers to Jacob, he's referring to the grandson of Abraham. When he refers to Jacob, he's referring to the grandson of Abraham. So now when he says, for example, here he says, he, he, for he established a testimony in Jacob, he was talking about his walk with the man Jacob. But you see, because Jacob is the grandson of Abraham, and God always established covenants in the third generation. Every third generation is very, very important to God. There's something about the number three. Yeah, there's something about number three. So you want to know anything that is perfect, check for the third. Check for the third generation. You want to know when a man have really, really served God. Check for the third generation. You want to know where the devil is going to attack very well. Check for the third generation. Praise God. So when, when scripture tells us that he, he a blessed man, a blessed man, a good man, for example, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now take note of that. A good man leaves an inheritance, not just for his children, for his children's children. So why? Because you see, that children's children is talking about the third generation. So the good man is the first, the children is the next, and then the children's children are the third generation. So you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So in establishing the covenant in Jacob, a new generation was born, and that is Israel. So when God renamed him Israel, it's not just a naming ceremony. God was calling out from Jacob a new generation. Now that is the one that represents the nation. See, that's the one that represents the nation. The nation is called Israel. Is it not amazing? Abraham was the one that walked with God, but the nation is not called by Abraham. The nation is called by Israel. And there's a reason for that because God established a new covenant in, in Jacob that gave birth to Israel. So now here he says, he established a testimony in Jacob. That means he walked with Jacob and he showed himself as God to Jacob. And then after that, he appointed a law in Israel. So because the whole of Israel, Israel as a nation, Israel as a people, came through the testimony that God established in Jacob. I'm going to explain that to you by tomorrow. He, but, but understand this. Anyone that begins to walk with God. Now, what I'm going to share with you this week is so important to your life. I want you to just follow me patiently so you have perfect understanding. Now, anyone who begins to walk with God, the first thing God establishes in his life is his testimony. So what does it mean? His testimony. God brings a proof in your life that he is there with you. He is walking with you. Now that may come by words that you will know that God has spoken to you. You will know that. See, now that's his testimony. See, when God speaks to you, he's bringing forth his testimony. He's telling you his mind that that's his testimony. And then other times there will be manifestations of God's spirit in your life in different dimensions. That is a proof 
that he is with you. And that's the first thing God does. So if you want to walk with God, if you're already walking with God, these are the first things you should begin to look out for. Where is the testimony of God in my life? Praise God. I'm going to explain this further when we continue speaking on this tomorrow. Praise God, because our time is up now. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless everyone watching me. And this is what I ask of you, Lord, that you will take them and begin to establish your testimony in their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone who doesn't see any major testimony in them. I pray this week, Lord, you will prove to them, Lord, that you love them. And bring, you will bring forth testimonies in their life that will establish them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.